So today we'll discuss about the workflow concept, but here we'll assign the workflow as well. And uh, apart from this, uh, we also mention all the uh, type one entities over here. And uh, we also mention the attach the business activity over here. So basically this business activity will tell you that whether it is for, can you hear me? Uh, okay, fine. Yeah. So uh, this particular uh, business activity tells you that whether it is for create or change or mass processing for uh, what activities. After that, uh, we can also uh, specify the SLS over here. Like, I mean, uh, when you are creating a change request, we can also define some SLS, whether it is a high priority, then medium priority or low priority kind of SLS we can define by adding the, the new entries over here. So this provides you the change request type definition part. Okay, once you define the change request type, don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP videos. Since we are adding here the particular workflow, uh, every workflow will have some workflow steps. Okay, so th for those workflow steps, so let's say for example, it is a two-step approval process, this change request. The workflow that I assigned is a two-step approval process. So in that case, First, we also need to define how many number of steps uh, that this particular workflow will contain. So once you define the number of steps, you will find those steps over here against your change request type. So let's say, for example, we have here, uh, this is the, the same change request type, it automatically displays over here. And if you go further down, here it shows the workflow steps. So these are the workflow steps that are uh, a part of uh, uh, that particular workflow. Okay, now at every workflow step, how my change request, uh, the behavior should look like. Okay, whether I wanted to skip or run authorization checks or duplicate check or validation or, or derivations. So uh, all these checks you can actually control, either you can uh, uh, untick or you can tick. And we also, uh, this is at the object level. We can also control it at a particular entity level as well. The same checks at entity level as well. Okay, uh, only for this particular entity, I wanted to run uh, some checks and I wanted to skip something. So that also you can configure. This is at the entity level. Similarly, you can also control at attribute level under that particular entity also. So let's say material type is there. I wanted to this per material type. If I say not relevant, that means this material type cannot be maintained within MDG processes. So likewise, you can up to attribute level, you can control uh, the behavior at every change request uh, step level, okay? Now at material type, at zero, zero step, I'm, I can say it's not uh, relevant, but I can say at next uh, approval step, I can make it as a relevant. So the requester cannot maintain this data, but approver can maintain. So these are the two uh, important configurations, part of your change request uh, uh, configuration. Now the third step is, how to create the workflows. So that is uh, again the third part. Okay, so what happens? We define the change request and we assign some workflow. And uh, after that, uh, before going into this second configuration, we also need to define the workflow steps because what are the workflow that you assigned over here? For every workflow, we need to assign a workflow. We need to define the workflow steps here. Then only once you assign the workflow step over here, then, then only you will find you can configure at every step how the behavior should look like under this particular configuration, okay? So today we will discuss uh, uh, the basics about uh, uh, MDG workflows, okay? So let's, let's take a simple scenario, okay? So <clears throat> a requester will be there, requester, okay? And requester will create the master data. And once he create the master data, he will submit that request. Okay. And once the request submit, once the request submitted, then what happens? It, it will go to something called approver one, first level approver. And approver will review the data. And if he thinks that, okay, this data is correct, he can actually again approve from his side. Then it will go to approver two. Okay. And approver two, what he can do is he can again review the data. And he can also feel that if this, this is correct, he can actually sub, uh, approve this request. Okay. So once everyone approves, then we will, there is a step called activate step. So we will initiate the activate step. And once the activate, activate step is successful, then the workflow will be closed successfully. Your workflow will be closed. 
okay so at any point of time let's say if approver 1 or approver 2 feels that uh, some changes are required or this is not a valid uh, request then they can actually reject this particular request at any point of time so either approve one one can reject approver two can reject if any of these folks rejects it will go to something called revision team or revision department and this revision department can review the rejection reasons and then they can take a call okay if the reason if the rejection reasons is something to correct some data they can correct the data and they can resubmit that request they can resubmit okay or if they think that okay the approver says that the, in the rejection reason this is a duplicate request and don't uh, uh, please just cancel this one in that case this reviewer can cancel that request cancel means here we call it as a uh, how you have here uh, 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 activation step here there is a way that you can withdraw this request once you withdraw the request there is a process called similar to activation there is a process called rollback process so what the rollback process will be initiated and once the rollback is completed your workflow will be completed so this is a typical two-step approval process uh, in mdg okay so uh, if you look at uh, uh, right this is the starting point okay and the ending point can be either this one or this one by successfully approving uh, the request you will reach to this end point or else by rejecting that request and uh, withdrawing that uh, from the uh, revision team you can reach to this point so these two are the end states and this is your starting state in between you have multiple intermediate uh, uh, stages okay now let quickly see a demo in the system how it look like and then we can discuss more okay so for the same uh, uh, more uh, ui application we created so i configured uh, one workflow so here we are creating a product master so yes. Okay, so now for, for our uh, 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 master data creation, we created two change request types. Okay, so one change request type is, uh, let me show you. Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP videos. Okay, here we created two change request types here. So this one and this one. So that is what creates st product standard, create product master two. So these two are showing over here. For the first one, create product standard. If I use this one, the workflow that is associated for this one is, you can see here, something ending with four zero, ending with four zero. This is a workflow, okay? So this workflow has got uh, uh some steps that you can find those steps over here if you go to the next configuration 